Let's take a look at the top eBay sales of comic books for the month of July 2024. Some interesting ones, including a couple of raw books that are always fun to analyze the sales of. Coming up next on this video from Bronzeville Comics. Hello, panelologists. This is Jim from Bronzeville Comics coming to you in another video. And in this video, we're going to take a look at the top eBay sales of July 2024 for comic books. And um, there's some usual culprits and a couple of interesting ones. Um, and uh, some books that we haven't seen on the list before. And I want to start with an honorable mention. So let's just get into the list. And here's my honorable mention. It's Amazing Spider-Man number one from 2022, the M&M variant, or as it's listed here, the uh, Hustle edition. Uh, it's a CGC 9.9, .9, which uh, they were asking for $20,000, and there was a best offer accepted of $10,000. So the book sold for $10,000, and that's according to um, the information from 130point.com which uh, you could take an, uh, an eBay sale and uh, paste it in, you know, copy and paste the title, Oops, excuse me, um, and you'll see what it sold for. So this book, 9.9, .9. and there we go. Uh, now, here's the thing. So it sold for $10,000. The 90-day average of a 9.8 is $559, and this kind of goes along with the, uh, the idea that um, – I know uh, Ryan with Automatic Comics has is of a 20X uh, for a 9.9, .9, especially one that is not common, uh, only two in the world. So, uh, yeah, 559, 10,000, just under 20X. So that is quite the premium to pay for that book. Uh, and the fact is that I don't think it really affects the values of 9.8 because most people are priced out of this anyway. Let's go to the list, and we're going to start with a raw book at number 10, and it's New Fun Comics from 1935. Uh, it is, uh, New Fun was the first DC Comics, and it basically was oversized. It was about, I think it might have been even larger than magazine size, um, and because I've never had one. <laughs> it's very rare, and it reprinted, uh, now in colors, uh, it reprinted comic strips. Sometimes I guess they colorize the daily strips. And for those of you that are too young to remember comic strips in the newspapers, um, they would be in black and white during the week. And then the Sunday funnies would be an insert all in color. Um, and there's the back cover. That's a pretty cool um, treasured flavor. Pirates burying beech nut uh, gum and candies. So that uh, actually, this book sold for, they listed it for 15000 It sold for $12,000. It's hard to say what it's worth because it's not a book that you're going to find on GP analysis because it's too large to be encapsulated. I believe it's closer to the size of a treasury edition. Um, probably like Life Magazine size. It was a large magazine format. Now, New Fun Comics eventually became more fun comics. <clears throat> which led to first appearances of the characters like Spectre, Dr. Fate, uh, Green Arrow, Aquaman, Superboy, Johnny Quick, etc. cetera. Uh, but it was New Fun number one was the first DC comic book. So we're talking platinum age here. Let's go to number nine on the list. It's another raw book. Oddly, it's sideways. Uh, it's Detective Comics number 31, this classic cover of the castle, which was uh, homaged by Neil Adams later on. And in asking price of 17,000, it sold for $13,000, which I think is a pretty good sale. The well, last sale of a 0.5 in July of 2020 of this book was for uh, 20,400. So this raw copy was bought for 13,000. Question is, I mean, if, if it's complete, I mean, it looks beat up, but, you know, we can see tears. Looks like the staple's barely holding on, both top and bottom. Piece missing out here, some paper loss there. 
Another chunk that could be folded over or missing there. <clears throat> um, and of course, it looks like, actually, that's weird. Are those extra staples? Because we see staples here and here. And then if we go to the back cover, we see staples there and there. Was it stapled? Again, I've not had a copy of this in hand. Was it stapled through all 68 pages? You know, rather than just through the spine where you'd have the staple coming out at the centerfold or is this reattached? Um, at any rate, um, yeah, that might make it a 0.5 or at best a 1.0, I would think. And this particular book, uh, I don't know what it's sold for in a 1.0. It doesn't sell often because there aren't many of them. Here's my concern. Some dude that has a feedback rating of five sold a $13,000 rare comic book one item sold got the comic from my grandpa after he died it's not in the best condition but it's still a great book i mean there's a chance that that's like that he got from grandpa but i'd be oh i mean yeah you're taking a little bit of a gamble there um located in portsmouth virginia uh man i would be i would have been very nervous to pony up thirteen thousand. but as long as ebay has buyer protection i guess the buyer is protected uh and it also the other thing it has this awesome date stamp that's pretty cool i mean somebody drew on it and everything i would um i don't know would you get this book conserved or would you just encapsulate it as is um at the very least i might if these are extra staples i may get them removed because they're not part of the original book but still a cool book for what i think is a really great price Let's go to number eight, another book we have not seen before, and it's Law Against Crime, or Against Crime, number one, in a CGC 8.5 Promise Collection pedigree with an L.B. Cole cover, L.B. Cole cover and art, um, Guy in the Electric Chair, this is from 1948, and it's kind of pre, pre-code horror, um, it's, I don't know if this book was mentioned in, in Sodi, but, um, yeah, Raymond Hamilton dies in chair. That is a, something that is emblematic of the pre-code horror age. You know, when you also take into account the the, the crime comics. Now, this is interesting. <clears throat> uh, let's take a look at the back cover because that's probably interesting as well. Hand colored, all leather, zipper built folds. Um, and it does have. I don't know. Was this uh, writing something that was? Common on the promise pedigree, promise pedigree. I don't know. I don't. I didn't. Maybe I didn't pay enough attention. I don't recall seeing that before. At any rate, this particular copy <clears throat> sold in 2021. I guess when it was first encapsulated for ten thousand two hundred dollars. So it increased and it sold here for thirteen thousand. So a twenty eight hundred dollar increase, which um, and it's white pages, uh, which for a promise pedigree is a little bit surprising because I've seen prices drop on maybe some of the big, big time books that's, that have resold like the, the Riddler book um, took a big, big uh, chop in price from the original sale uh, when heritage sold the promise collection for the family. And when it was resold on the open market um, <clears throat> now, just to compare this to a non pedigree book in 2022, a 8.5 blue label sold for $5,040. So we're talking about a two and a half time multiple for a, promise pedigree i will say that it also has the benefit of having um a lb cole cover and lb cole's i think his, his popularity has increased in recent years let's go to number seven this is an interesting one uh this is amazing fantasy number 15 8.5 qualified grade um <clears throat> that sold for fifteen thousand dollars and you know, so that's a pretty interesting sale. Staples replaced wrong back cover. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll take a look in a minute. Uh, I don't know if that means it's a married back cover to another. Because sometimes if a book is missing a back cover, if somebody's going to restore the book, 
they will take a back cover from the same month of a lesser book and uh, then just replace it and marry the two together. We'll take a look at that because believe it or not, Amazing Fantasy 15 is going to appear on the list again. Um, and I didn't check what a 0.5 sold for um, most recently. I think that this would have to be worth less than a lot of point fives just because of the that back cover issue, but it still is sort of complete. Um, so this particular book sold for fifteen thousand dollars. There was a recent sale of twelve thousand for a regular point five. So fifteen thousand is fairly robust because we can see here an incomplete copy sold for twelve thousand. I don't know about this particular one. Um, that sold for 12 grand. And there was another sale this year of 10,000. This is a recent um, CGC submission. So we should see the book. Yeah, this is a regular 0.5. And we can see it's, I believe, the same back cover. Now, what makes this a 0.5? Multiple staples added after, after manufacturing. Modern pisses out of cover. I guess there's enough out of the cover. And you can see a, a staple added there. Um, you know, that's kind of the, the problem with the 0.5 sometimes. Like a lot of stuff falls into the 0.5. So this sold for, I'm, I, that sold for 12,000. And this recent one sold for 15,000, which for, I, I mean, just to get a blue label, I think would be worth it. And it, it presents somewhat similarly. Let's go to number six on the list. And it's Amazing Fantasy number 15, a raw copy that went up for auction, sold for $16,101 after 73 bids. Uh, and the question is, what kind of condition is this in? Now, uh, you know, we got the Marvel chipping, we got tears, we got, you know, writing on the back cover. Not the best pictures. I don't know what's going on up here with that kind of white discoloration. Um, if we could take a look at the, they, they do have pictures of the inside front cover. Was that water damage maybe? Doesn't look like color touch. And we can see the staples barely attached. Like uh, 16,000, 1.5 sold recently. The 90 day average is 18,000 and change. 1.88, um, 90 day average is 17 and change. 2.0, 19 and change. And this raw one sold for 16000 and change. So um, you're taking a little bit of a risk. Do you think it's going to get... Uh, also, this is, I do not know comic books. We do our best to show any condition problems. All have been in protective covers for years, yada, yada, yada. So not a lot of information in the description. Um, and it's somebody who just came across a copy, uh, maybe somebody cleans out houses, and just threw it up on the eBay. <laughs> Let's go to number five on the list. This is a copy of X-Men number one, CGC 5.5 signature series with a Stan Lee signature. Um, and that's witnessed because it gives the date that Stan Lee signed it back in 2013. This sold for, uh, after an asking price of 18000 it sold for $16,750. Um, a blue label 5.5 has a 90-day average of 12665 So that's like a $4,000 bonus for the Stan Lee signature. Um, it is a fairly nice copy. Now, the question is, has it been cleaned and pressed? It doesn't look like it has. So there could also be the aspect of somebody buying this. Yeah, that has not been pressed. Um, thinking they could get that has not been pressed. They could get a grade bump on this. Because also this was encapsulated. At least Stanley signed it back in 2013. And cleaning and pressing was not commonplace back then. So I think... Um, somebody thinking they can get a bump on this book potentially. Now, would you then submit it to CGC to have them press it? Or would you press it yourself and get the uh, JSA signature verification? I'm not sure if there's another option there. Let's go to number four on the list. And this is an interesting one. We're staying with X-Men and we're jumping 128 issues into the future to Uncanny X-Men 129, CGC 9.8 Mark Jewelers insert. And it's the first appearance of Emma Frost, Kitty Pride, 
And um, yeah, it's the Mark Jewelers that, that sells this. So this was an asking price of 26000 and it sold for $17,001. Um, and interestingly, I only have a picture of the front cover. And it was encapsulated long enough ago, with starting with 3A2, that it's not going to be a book um, that CGC is going to have the pictures on the site. Also, Mark Jewelers inserts with what went on recently. Now, for the price, $17,000. The last sale, the 90-day average of a blue label direct is $1,524. And the last newsstand sale of a 9.8 is $2,400. So this is like a five times markup for a Mark Jewelers insert. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. Is that something that, you know, is that desirable? I mean, it was to somebody uh, to pay essentially an additional uh, $14,600 for a Mark Jewelers insert. I'd be a little gun shy to do that uh, after what went on recently. Let's look at uh, number three on the list. And this is a classic Fantastic Four number one, CGC 4.5, uh, sold by Blizzard Comics for $20,000. And it uh, creams off white pages. And there's the book. Beautiful FF number one. And uh, so this sold for 20000 even. Uh, which is a pretty robust sale. The 90-day average is 19600 The 12-month average is 19576 So a little bit above that. Uh, somebody paid up for the book, and maybe, you know, the movie coming out increased popularity. But it's well within, you know, four or $500. is not that big a deal when you're spending $20,000 on a book. Let's go to number two on the list. And we're going to the Copper Age. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, number one, first print CGC 9.4. Went up for auction after 54 bids. It sold for $22,877.77. Excuse me. And um, if we look at similar, the 12-month average is 23884 So it's about $1,000 less than that, which is, uh, I don't think, you know, that's within the realm of reasonableness of just, rent, you know, uh, variability you're going to find in that sale. So uh, I think this is a, an incredibly fair sale. Uh, based on recent data, um, not as high as it once was. And look at how early it was encapsulated. Zero, zero as the first two digits in the verification. Let's go to number one on the list. And it is a copy of Amazing Fantasy number 15, CGC 3.5, uh, sold by Absolute Comics and Statues, uh, Buddy Lawrence over at Absolute uh, Comics and Collectibles. He um, has his own YouTube channel. Check him out. Uh, he's... Uh, I've seen him at shows and stuff, uh, run into him. And uh, he ha was asking $40,000, accepted 10% less at $35,999.99, uh, which is a good sale. A robust sale. The 30-day average on this is $31,412. A nice, nice presenting 3.5. Lawrence, I'm assuming that this is your undercopy, that you do have a better copy, at least a ni nicer raw copy of Amazing Fantasy 15. This is a good-looking 3.5. Um. Did my question, Lawrence, is did you submit this yourself? And if so, was it cleaned and pressed? Um, and I, I'm kind of wondering if somebody, yeah, maybe seeing here, or did you like uh, potential for a bump ski? Of course, you know, cracking out a $36,000 comic book out of a CGC case is a little nerve wracking, but um, yeah, a nice book, a nice sale. Uh, and of course, Amazing Fantasy with three of the top 10 on the list. So that's going to do it for the top 10 list of eBay sales for July of 2024. Um, I, I do like when there's raw books because then you can kind of take a look. Leave in the comments below what you think the grades of like that Detective 31 and the raw Amazing Fantasy 15 could be. Um, just because then it's kind of interesting to compare it to the graded sales, which it's easier to... Um, come up with comparable prices when you do have graded books, especially big time books like that. Anyway, in the meantime, you can take a look at a couple of my other videos here. And this is Jim saying until next time, enjoy your comics.